Hello, everyone. Welcome to the channel. So happy you could show up today. I love you guys. Thank y'all so much for your likes, shares, subscribes. I'm really, really touched. I'm grateful. And um, we're here to do a creator's view today. And uh, before we start, just want to say I love you guys and I hope everybody's doing okay. Um, you know, um, I hope everybody's been having a wonderful time. Now, today is um, Sunday, the 23rd of June. Wow. The last few days, we went through a lot of energies, right? The full moon in Capricorn, summer solstice, and um, what else? There was something else. Well, I guess it don't matter. Full moon in Capricorn. Oh, and the sun moved into Cancer. So... Cancer and Capricorn are sisters. They're right across from each other, right? And I am sure that there has been a whole lot of uh, feelings, or I hope so, uh, because feelings are healings, right? A uh, perfect time, you know, with the sun, the light, you know, and the dark all balanced up and us uh, moving forward in our healing and progress towards the best we can be at any one time, right? Yeah. Transmutation of heavy negative energies. And um, I know I've been transmuting a lot myself. And what does that mean? That means we just have to have days that aren't perfect. Days that, you know, that we're maybe a little depressed or a little sad or whatever. Uh, but God wanted me to give you guys this message. Oh, what happened? I got stuff disappears all the time. What did I do with the book? Oh, there it is. Um, that you are a work in progress. And there's going to be days as you go along this journey that you're going to be really happy. And then there's going to be days that aren't so happy. And the whole point being is that we want to allow ourselves to express and emote what we need to. So let's, let's roll these dice. This is for um, Creator's view of what he would like to speak to you guys or she. I have to say she. It's a habit to say he. Um, you know, there we go. We have Mercury, One, and Taurus, uh, focusing on self, okay? Talking to oneself, how you speak to yourself, okay? So uh, you are the most important person in this story right now. You are the number one. So you need to really talk to yourself in a good way, and I hope you guys do. I hope you guys are always telling yourself, uh, I can get through this, or I can do this, or I am strong, or, you know, whatever you need to hear that you turn into your own mother and you speak that to yourself, or whatever you need that you be your own father and you speak to yourself. And if you need happy and joy, then get in touch with something that brings out your inner child right? Uh, puppies. Uh, wow, what a wonderful gift. God brought those puppies to me at the most perfect time. There's nothing like a new life to bring this nurturing joy into one's soul. And even a plant, you know, plants are awesome to help one to feel, you know, alive. And, and you become friends with them. My plants are my friends. I talk to them, you know, and, and they, they actually tell me when they want water. You know, they'll be like, well, it's time to water, and I can hear it coming from outside of myself. So let's see what the Creator has to say to us today. Let's look for this archetype here. I love you guys, and um, I hope everything is going awesome for everybody. The whole world is changing and in turmoil. 
and you know let's be like what 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 is it you know you just be still right be still we got the creator okay this is the creator's view I've never got this card before. I think I'm going to hold this back and steady it tomorrow. The creator. I love it. Look at that. The paintbrush. The paintbrush is in your hand. And the first thing you want to create as a creator is yourself. You want to work on creating who you are, who you'd like to be, what you'd like to see in your life. Well, I didn't get the number, did I? 22, 2, 2, 2, 2. Yeah, okay, let's look at that. Look over here. Yes, the creator, 22. Yeah, I love that. And this is creator's view, too. So the creator is something, right? The source of all things, the creator. Let's get up here and look at this. The artist, the alchemist, the innovator. And yeah, that's what I was wanting to talk to you guys about too, about alchemizing your energy, of using love, the love you have for yourself. And on those days when you feel down, you will be able to alchemize that heavier, denser energy, whether you picked it up through because you're an empath or you've had an argument or you're just down on yourself, right? You don't want to do that. Yeah, you don't want to do that. The creator, the first archetype in the trio of existence is not intimidated by darkness or by lack. They know that from the void, creation inevitably emerges with meager minimal and outlandish materials the creator reveals a new image right so we're working on creating our own selves first after we get ourselves created in who we are then we set out to create the world around us right right yeah and it will happen as it establishes within it will establish on the without um, ba, 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 ba. They make the empty room resonate with healing sounds. They generate bounty from the seed that others tossed away. Through generative, this archetype annihilates preconceived notions of what is possible, leaving unexpected openings in the wake of its destruction. The creator does this by first being absolutely present to what is not imagining or wishing things were different. And second, trusting that a force greater than themselves awaits constant collaboration with each human soul, whether we call it nature, God, goddess, Shakti, divinity, it remains nameless. It is the creator's lifelong companion. You know, it's the eternal. Right? Right, the eternal. How can you name it? Nobody can hold it. You know, it's a presence that's there. Some people acknowledge it and some people don't. But for those of us who see it, it's like we're on this hot trail and we've got to find more and more and more about this, this eternal thing. This, you know, we know we've been incarnated before. We know we've been here and we've been there. Those of us who are fully awakened, we understand that, you know, we've had past lives, we've seen them, you know, and, and the search for the creator has been in every generation of man. And for those who look with faith and don't want, you know, material things, because God doesn't really desire to make us rich, life is sacred, everybody should be rich. Everybody should be abundant. Not one person should ever have to worry about supplying anything that they need. It would, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the, my idea and the plan of how we would do this is very extensive. 
but things wouldn't change much other than we would get the better end of the stick. Right, sure, we'd still have to work four hours a day, but instead of investing and and giving our money to these rich people who harvest our energy and get five times more, or 20 times more, or 100 times more than what we get paid when we're the source that makes them rich, we are the energy that keeps them pumping. When we learn how valuable we are, when we learn how loved we are by God, nature, creator, we will begin to understand the true God of nature, the true creator, not the one that wants to imprison us, put us on our knees and tell us if we don't do this, we're going to hell. How dare they? How dare they? Healing ourselves, five of earth, six of fire, passion. Yeah, like a God that would create this beautiful place on this planet would actually be somebody that could put people in hell forever and burn them and torture them. No, that's not God. Who can create but he that loves? Whoever created something like that had no love. We don't want that creation. We're going to exit out. We don't believe in it. We don't want it. And since we're the source, if we don't believe in it and we don't want it anymore, it won't be. Okay. Where are we at? And you guys are all creators out there. We're every single one of us are a creator. We create our own life. We take accountability. We uh, put our best foot forward, but we all have days where we feel a little depressed or a little tedious or agitated. And those are the days of transmutation. You're fermenting. Look at it like that. You've got fermentation going on. What you need is, you know, you want to meditate a little bit. And in your meditation, you want to uh, pull the energy from the ethers out of the void. The void is all around us. We're in the void. We pull it out of the void, the ethers. We call it out and it will come to us. And we cleanse all the energy off of us that belong to other people and other things and other ideas until we can get to our pure natural self where God can you know, the creator can come in and talk to us because we're a temple. It has to be a clean one. It has to be full of truth, honor, accountability, and a willingness to put your best foot forward because God only takes the best, right? Right. What is that? Beautiful sunflower. You know, I, a rose. Yeah, a rose. You know, roses. Roses are beautiful, and they come in every color, every shape, every size. None is alike. Just like, just like people. Not one rose is ever like another rose. We're all individuals. We all have all this beautiful stuff within us, but hardly few of us ever take the time, five minutes, to even look within and see the treasures to see our good heart, to cleanse our energy, to love ourselves enough to wipe off all the dirt everybody has thrown on us and clean it off. You sweep out your house, you, need, you sweep out your temple, and we do that through transmutation. How do we do that? Well, we sit down for five minutes and we give ourselves some love We talk to our heart and tell our heart that we appreciate every step that it's helped us to walk through this life. We eat a good meal. Maybe we have an apple and peanut butter or watermelon or some fruit. And we tell our flesh and body that we love it and we're gonna give it some good minerals and vitamins and we feel good about it. We exercise for a few minutes. Oh, look, fruit, I tell you what, strawberries are excellent. I actually have a tattoo, a strawberry tattoo. I have a strawberry tattoo and a peacock tattoo. It was hand done 34 years ago. Yeah, 34. I love strawberries. 
the first fruits, strawberries, the first fruits of spring. So maybe I'm talking to the God's first fruits of this new revolution that we're on, where we're getting ready to change the world. We got the spider building the web, the web, you know, uh, the net. Isn't that funny? Back in Egypt, there was actually a, um, a cult group that were called the netters, the webbers. And they, I think, were a part of the collective consciousness to where they would connect out, they send their energy out into the consciousness in order to lead and guide the people of the collective consciousness. And, you know, um, I guess I'm going to have to go ahead into it and talk about Jesus and them throwing all those nets off the boats and stuff like that, looking for fish. Because there are energies and consciousnesses that are out there that maybe they were looking for to try to catch and draw down knowledge and wisdom. And we have the rocking horse here. I guess it's all child's play. It's all in the imagination, right? I imagine a nation. You are that nation, the sovereign nation. You're sovereign. You're sovereign. You're free and you're sovereign to use your mind and think any way you want, even outside the box. You can think in multi-dimensional, neon, fantastic colors, right? Those are, that's a clean chakra field. Somebody been cleaning their chakras. Yeah. Wow. The rainbow, because it is the rainbow. It's every color in the rainbow is in your chakra from the purple all the way down to the red. And I think the spectrum is like the same. Every chakra is connected to a gland in your body. Isn't that weird? And glands are odd things. They produce these certain hormones, I guess, uh, that are needed in order to stay healthy. And so since the chakras are connected to your glands, maybe those energetic centers have something to do with, you know, keeping one healthy, happy. What is it? Healthy, happy, wealthy, you know, spiritually wealthy. Uh, spiritually wealthy is even better than being uh, financially wealthy because when you're spiritually wealthy, you don't worry about anything. Everything just comes right to you. God will just bring it there. It just happens. Every day, you know, when I go to work, I panhandle, okay, on the corner and pray for people that bless me. And I meet new people every day. I love my job. I met beautiful people today. I meet beautiful people every day. I feel like what I do is sacred. Very few people want to go to the corner and be thought of as a beggar. But I'm a healer. I'm not a beggar. I heal out on the corner. I meet people from every um, level, every class, every, every, um, what am I trying to say? You know, humanity is so many different levels and, and social settings. And I meet people from every social setting and I love it. I talk to everybody. I love it. It's a beautiful job and I always have what I need. Do I have more than what I need? Do I have savings? No. Do I have anything like that? No. But every day I have what I need. My rent is paid. Um, I, you know, I have what I need and I have nothing to complain about. I meet different new people on, on, on my terms every day. And whether people think I'm a beggar or not don't matter. I'm a healer. I'm an undercover healer. And, um, yeah, creative fire, nine of fire. That robe is made of all the years a piece of cloth taken from 
Well, according to the book, which fell apart, and I can't find all the pieces, but from every scar, she took a piece and created this robe, and look how regal she is. You know, she didn't let anything get her down. She went in and worked on everything, every single thing. She made sure that her spirit, her inner child knew that she was loved. And if she wasn't loved by anybody but herself and God of creation and, you know, nature, nature, whoever you want to call God, the creator of all things. You know, a lot of people say Jesus was creator of all things. No, the creator of all things who never done nothing like that. And I, let me tell you something. The heavens would have never allowed the creator of all things to be done that way. That is the worst kind of blood magic I have ever seen. I will probably lose people again. That's okay. I'm not here to make anybody happy. I'm here to tell the truth of how I feel. Uh, it's blood magic. It's a call blood magic. It's it's not good. It's not good. It's a prison. It's a prison and an entrapment of your soul and your spirit. Whereas you could be using that energy to invest in yourself because you're source. You're the source. You're plugged into this earth. God would never send you to hell. God would never punish you for making a mistake when that's what we're supposed to do. You believe in God and trust in God and God will build you up into a trophy. He will show you off to the other people who think they know everything but don't, who aren't willing to change or think outside the box. Right? Right. You know, who've taught for years that women, you know, had a place. Like, what? I ain't got no place. My place is everywhere. We're the mothers of this planet. We're the portals that brings in source. And it's time as women, you know, the page is blank. We can write the future. Now I'm talking to all divine feminines. And if there are masculines in here, and if they look at themselves and take accountability, they will know that women get paid less. Women are the ones that more likely have to give up their children or have abortions because they ain't got no place to go or they have a hell of a traumatic history behind them. Uh, you know, women, what, we didn't even get to vote till what, 50 years ago? And our country is better than over in Africa. You can kill your wife in some places. You can beat her. You can take her children and throw her out of the house. Are you kidding me? She's source. One of air, that's the truth. And before us, we got this blank page. And it's time that equality came to this planet as far as women are concerned. And, and the condemnation of these religions saying people are going to go to hell. Hell, they burned the witches too. Yeah. Air Chrome Sage. Yeah, I'm bringing you the truth. The Chrome. I, I proudly wear that name. Yeah, you know, I, I, I made it to the crown. Independent, single, fierce. You know, planning on changing things one way or another. Doing the best I can to let people know how I feel about things, about the things that I've seen that were on the other side of the world, on the other side of the curtain, on the other side of the veil. That death is not sacred, life is. The most special and precious thing is life, not death. And that, that portrayal that death is sacred and that we should send our sons because God the Father gave his son for death so, you know, we can have wars and stuff and take our children out too. What a bad example. 
What a bad example of God's love. And it pisses me off as a mother. And you know what? There was a time when I thought I would have to have Jesus to save me. I really. But you know, God showed me, the true God showed me that we're all we're all saved. We're all saved. We're just here as independent souls, learning to be strong and wise and um, better, better than we were in our last life. And where are we heading? Probably to be the X-Men someday, you know? When we learn how to do right on this planet, I understand that all will start seeding other planets, but the Holy Spirit, creator of source of all things says, we cannot take our animalistic ways out to other planets and create them and create worlds that are um, not free, not free. We haven't been free for a long, long time on this planet. We've been under the rule of something or someone that's behind the veil. And now that veil is being lifted and we are walking out of the shadows. Water Amazon daughter, moon time. Yeah, it has been moon time, right? We're coming out of the shadows. Full moon. So the moon is shining through the shadows. We're seeing it and we're feeling it too. We feel it in our hearts and souls that Creator would like for us to step up, put our best foot forward. Divine masculines re realize how special your divine feminines are and how uh, important a wonderful union between two people who love each other are upon this earth. That's an energetic, you know, you've, you've created a pillar. And so, you know, it's not easy for the feminine or the masculine but, and conflict is sure between two people trying to blend together as one, there's always going to be conflict. But if both are willing to work through the conflict, wow, you know, you see 50 years down the road when both are getting older and whatnot and you have each other, think of what, how wonderful that would be. You know, it was a dream of mine. I don't know if this dream will ever come true for me, but I really see and think a lot of people have this dream of living and growing old with someone they love. And, you know, walking that last 10 years, you know, celebrating all the years that you were together and all the things that you created. But hell, nobody can get along long enough to do that. Hardly, very few. Okay. Well, where the world is changing, consciousness is changing, and, you know, looking at a creator is changing. Because we're the creators. So we can create, in our own mind, what created us. Does that sound crazy? It worked for me. Like, you know, I never was welcome in church. I, I got kicked out of like three different churches throughout my lifetime. Why? Women shouldn't speak too much. I'm not into being held back. And, um... From the way I understand, I have a little bit of Cali Ma in me, too. And, uh, you know, she's the picture in the death card of the woman standing on Ned's neck. Right? Makes me wonder if she had a little few says in the Bible herself. Let's step on their neck. <laughs> I love Cali Ma. There ain't nothing wrong with her. She's karma. She's justice. She's Mott. 
Ortiz. I'll take care of this, and I'll talk to you later. I like a good mama that's willing to whip a son's ass that needs it. My mama beat my ass. Look at me, I'm, I'm not worse to wear for it. I don't think you should hurt your child. I don't think you should hit him in the face or break any bones ever. But man, a good ass whipping goes a long way. And it brings respect and it humbles them. And a humbled child and a humbled man and a humbled human is so much better than an egotistical narcissist. So much better. Sisterhood is powerful, full of, full of fire, celebration. Yeah, let's take our world back. It's, it's, you know, I don't know if I was raised in a bad place, which I know it was, but if men just didn't have respect for women and that I um, never had the opportunity to get into a place where, you know, we, we got treated as equals, or if it's all around the world, and if women all around the world have dealt with it. I've watched shows from Africa. I know it's rough over there. Let me know if your life has been that way, because I would have to rethink my opinion and do something different to meet different, you know, men, I guess, is what I'm saying. I don't want to harp on men. But even my husband's, you know, only wanted a few things from me. Cook, clean, take care of the kids. You know, other than that, they were off with their buddies or doing whatever, you know. So, you know, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. Actually, I'm just talking. I love y'all. I guess we're just exploring life and, and the past history of women. And, um, you know, how through the church we got attached to men. It was death to us part. Hell, women already could get a divorce, get anything out of anything. You know, there was, they, they're, most divorced women are left struggling. Yeah, struggling. And these are statistics that are real, and they kind of really make me upset. And I, I guess what I'm asking is for everybody to uh, get ready to go into warrior mode and let's change the world, not through fighting, but with truth. With truth that we're every bit as equal and we have a right to have our say in this world because women are better nurturers and can run this place better. We need more women in office. We need more women in power equally, equally. For every man that's in power, there should be a powerful woman standing right next to him to balance that damn scale. And she needs to be a fighter for the people, right? She needs to be somebody that can stand up and tell the men what she can think. And so we're looking and what we're working on is creating and building ourselves into strong women, teaching our daughters to be strong women. And I know this is a creator's view, but this is the way it went. It went this way, so we're going to go with it. And everything I'm saying is true. I'm not being biased. I'm not taking up for women over men. I'm not blaming every man. I'm just saying our history, we have been pretty much uh, held back. And this is the time of Kali Ma, Kali Uga, where the divine feminine is coming in strong strong. You can feel it. You know it's time. And so what I'm asking is take your time, you know, clean your energetic centers, wash them clean, get ready, stand strong, speak your truth. Even if you do it crying or having a fit, Sometimes, you know, when I got to speak up after nobody's listened to me for a while, I go stomping through the house and I make sure they hear me. You know, what are they going to do? <laughs> they usually run. <laughs> but 
that's okay. I got their attention. You know, I don't really want to do that like that, but I, like I say, I've, I've had some, you know, I, I don't know why or if it's just everywhere, been ignored and acted like, oh, you know, like that, not taken seriously. Them telling me how I feel, like, what the fuck? And this is before I started opening my mouth. Now I don't ever close it since I opened it. Okay, guys, I love y'all. Please like and share, subscribe. Hang out with me. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. Six of water. We're all dreaming of a better world for ourselves and our children. Of equality. Where women are seen for their beautiful intelligence. Their emotional intelligence, right? We have emotional intelligence. Feelings. We can feel it. It's intuitive. And that's why men need to get in touch with their feelings as deep as they can. Because they have the same thing as we do. We just got to quit telling them to be a man. Feel it, son. Can you feel it? Yeah, we need to ask our boys to feel, too. How do you feel today? You know, help them to express their emotions. Help them to express how they feel so that they can understand feelings are a very important part of life. Help your young men to express themselves. Girls express themselves. I express myself as a young girl by crying a lot. I was a crybaby. You know, I, I would have these emotions I couldn't say or nobody understood and I would just cry. I understand why now. You know, I mean, I really do. And so if your child is crying or they can't express your emotions, please help them because they want to say something, but they don't know how to say it. And they might need um, support and to teach them that emotions are okay. It means you're alive, honey. You feel that's wonderful. Your, your magical waters are working. And then make sure how you talk to their waters because remember, waters hold memory. And we don't want our children growing up today having to repair, you know, what we did as parents. Even me, myself, I was not the best parent. I'll be healing those, those, those things with my children probably for the rest of my life. I'm not exempt. But I also understand that nobody taught me how to be a parent. And my own parents, you know, didn't even know how to be a parent. So, you know, it was it was a hit and run. It's unfortunate. But my my kids are doing well and I love them. But I was not a perfect parent at all. And if I look back and could do it all over again, I would have I would talk to my kids while they were crying instead of telling them to shut up and go to their room. You know, I would have, I would have, but I didn't know that. I, I just did what my mom did and that's what we do, right? But their emotions are important. They need to know how to allow them so that what, as they grow up, they can feel what's going on around them. They won't be so full of all those emotions that they stuff down. They'll be clean and clear. And whenever the waves roll of the emotions, they'll understand what they mean and figure it out. Okay, guys, I love y'all. Have a wonderful evening. Thank y'all so much for all your everything. And I'm going to put a new video up of my babies. I love the babies. I take them with me everywhere I go. It's been wonderful. I love you guys. Bye-bye.